My name is Mark Cobb. I've been going to Guyana now for three years. Well, our typical missions trip to Guyana since I've been going is normally a month long. Typically when we go there, we'll get to Georgetown and we'll be there for a day or so and then we're gone to the jungle. We'll go to the Northwest District that we call Region 1 of Guyana and um, minister in the different churches and villages up in that area. Setting up Bible schools, uh, preaching at different churches, uh, ministering to different families and, and church members, uh, that type of thing. Something that happened that very night, the very first night we were out in the jungle. This is my very first missions trip to Guyana. My very first missions trip, period. Um, we were out in the jungle in a place called Cloudland. Ronnie comes in and goes, can you guys come down and pray for my neighbor? One of my neighbors, uh, we think she might have died. And we're like, what? Yeah, there's been three or four different people in the village that have died in the last month or so. And that we don't know why, we don't know how, but it looks like she may be gone. And um, on the way over there, the Lord put the, ma the, the story of Jarius's daughter in my mind, in my heart. And I started sharing it with Marv and he's like, well, keep that thought. When we get over here, we're gonna see what happens. As we're coming up to the house, so you can hear this, all this commotion going on inside. And we go inside and there's about 20 people in there. And the pastor's wife is down on her hands and knees screaming in this lady's left ear. And uh, this lady's not even moving. She's not moving. She's not even flinching. And you'd think if somebody's screaming in your ear, you're going to be moving around a little bit. Not this late. And I reached down and I, I just put my hand on her, her left wrist just to see if there's any life at all. And I, I didn't feel a pulse. And I stood back up and I leaned over to Marvin and go, geez, Marv, I think she might be dead. And so Marvin and I get down on our hands and knees and we just started praying over her, not screaming and hollering, just proclaiming the Word of God over her. Well, we prayed for about five minutes, maybe. We stood up, stood back, stood there for a second looking at her. Within about 30 seconds, she shot straight up in bed, sat straight up, eyes wide open, looking around in the room like, what happened? How did I get here? What are you guys doing here? And who are these two white guys? I mean, she'd never seen us before. So, I mean, when that happened, Pastor Gregory, he just starts going crazy. He's jumping up and down, praising God. And that was the beginning of my first missions trip. I mean, from there, it just kind of escalated up. The next day at church, the place was packed. We probably had church for three hours, prayed for everybody in the village. It, it was awesome because word had got out that Granny over here had gotten raised from the dead. And oh my goodness, that there, yeah, that was my first missions trip and probably one of the most miraculous things that's ever happened to me, to say the least. Well, what do missionaries do that pastors and evangelists, Sunday school teachers don't do? I would think is have the, have the desire to get out of their comfort zone and go to a place that's probably pretty hard to get to, to live a lifestyle that they're not normally used to, and just love seeing people that are hard to reach get saved and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Uh, probably right now, the biggest challenge is 
with me just getting started and just getting started with my ministry called the Master's Ministry, that getting the organization going that will bring in the, the finances to do the trips.